Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talking all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. Well, today is actually a special edition series, so we are going to be kicking off a new series. I have with me Executive Director of the Lake Orion DDA, Molly Lalone. Hello, Molly. Hello. Thank you, Tracy, for having me here today. So excited to have you. Now, we have a full series where we are going to cover what is the DDA, what does it do, where does it get its funding from, and a whole lot of other great stuff. But first, today, we're going to be talking about an exciting project that is coming up that we want you to have more details on, and time is of the essence, so we want to make sure you have those before we get into the rest of it. So... Yeah, without further ado, Molly is here and we are going to be talking about the Lake Orion Lumberyard Project. Um, I know there's been a lot going out there, you know, on over the years, like, oh, what is the Lake Orion Lumberyard going to be? And, you know, what's coming there? And we've heard lots of different things as to what might be going in there. But the best news I heard was the day that I learned that the DDA is looking at becoming um, the developing that space and developing it for our community, which like that was the most exciting news that I have heard. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm glad so, to hear that. So yeah, so so tell us a little bit about it. So what is what is this project? What is the Lake Warrior and Lumberyard project? All right. Well, um, everybody, if you think about. Atwater and Broadway, mm -hmm. um, Leo's is on the corner, and yeah. right behind it, that's Lake Orion Lumberyard. And it's been a true acting lumberyard for many generations. It's family-owned business, yeah. and they're ready to retire. Okay. And um, that property is right at the south edge of downtown, and we would like to take over the property and develop it um, for... Of dedicated event space. We would like to incorporate with um, Leo's to make it a little safer at that yeah. intersection yep. um, by reducing the number of driveways that are going into that area. That would be great. <laughs> and um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the design charrette, but we had some public participation and we yeah. found out that everyone wants a dedicated event space yes. and that's the perfect place for it. It is. Oh my gosh. It's so great. And it's really close to the Paint Creek Trail. I mean, everything yes. is kind of there. It's right yeah. off of Meeks Park. Um, I, I mean, there's yes. just, I'm just really, really excited about this project. So what are the reasons, how did this come to be? How, I mean, you know, I've heard some different rumors, you know, of yeah. what it might become, you know, if it was purchased by developers, um, which, you know, developers, obviously, you know, if they're looking to purchase a space, they're purchasing it so that they can benefit themselves in some way, right? Yeah, and make a profit. Yeah, yeah make that's a their profit. Business. It's like, their business yeah, to that's, make a profit. That's what they're looking to do. So yeah. the DDA looking to purchase this property and develop it for the community, yes. there is, I mean, it, it's for us. Like the for, DDA yes. is looking to purchase it for us us. Mm -hmm. And um, so what are some of the, yeah, how did this come to be? Tell us a little more. Actually, um, a year before we even were able to think about it seriously, a village council member came into a DDA board meeting and said, I think you guys should purchase this property. And it was spurred, uh, I believe, because um, there was a developer talking to planning commission and village council about how um, they needed to have a you know higher density than normal, and um, they were just they were talking to developers who continually wanted to have a lot more on that property mm -hmm. than what is in the zoning. And okay. you know our zoning is our map. It's what we what we as a community has decided that we wanted. Right. Right. So um, so he came in and he said, hey, I think you guys should buy it. Well, at the time it was already under a purchase agreement. That was not something we could even consider. Right. But then it ended. That purchase oh. agreement went away, and okay. somebody called and said, Psst, it it's just went away. It's available. How about it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that is so great. So so not only are you looking to purchase this property so that it can benefit, you know, to be a, a community space and a dedicated event space, um, but there's some other issues with the property, and by the DDA purchasing it and developing it, you there's some safety concerns that you can actually protect the community from yes as i understand it yeah, yeah yeah well that property has been obviously lake orion is old right. and that property has been an active property for a really long time and originally there was a railroad um the railroad went right through there 
Um, there was uh, gas stations there, okay. you know, and now the lumber yard is there. All of that, all of that different industry has deposited um, somehow environmental waste into the ground. Okay. So there's something, there's a concern there, and yeah. we want to be able to address those concerns to make it safe for the residents of Lake Orion. Right. And well, keep our environment as safe as we can. Well, yeah, our environment, and then we have the 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 lake and yeah. the, all the water that's nearby. Right. So yeah, um, we want to we want to contain that um, those problems there on that property and make sure that they can't migrate into our lake or on, into the creek yeah. or into someone else's yard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we definitely don't want that. No. <laughs> no. And we want it to so, be safe when our when our children are on that property. We want to know that they are safe there. Yes, absolutely. So mm-hmm. okay, so you're gonna. Not only develop this for the community, but then take care of those concerns, which mm-hmm. are there. They're presently there. So mm-hmm. by taking taking care of these, we don't have to worry that there's going to be something that could happen currently or in the future then t- to any of our health. Right. So Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes. That's great. Um, yeah. And then you also mentioned that the some of the safety with the driveways and having Leos mm-hmm. there. And yes, I know like myself, right, driving north on 24 and – you might have somebody stop like so quickly to turn into Leo's. And so right. part yeah, of this driveway is right after the it, intersection. And, and that's not what that's actually the road commission has requested that um, the village deal with that um, okay. safety issue. That, yeah. So that's a, that's an, an existing issue that the road commission has asked the village to um, resolve and okay. the DDA. Um, that's one of the things that we're taking into, into account when we talk about that property. Okay. We want to solve that problem. Okay, for sure. Yeah, that yeah, that's great. So you're going to be able to solve that problem as well by by changing the where the drive is and yes. and and how you access both of the spaces. Yes, and it's absolutely yeah. in cooperation with Leo's. Leo, okay. the owner of Leo's, is interested in working with us. He can see the advantage um, of of solving those problems and being part of our overall project in okay. that in that corner of course he is we have yes. the best business owners we really do we really do everybody's yes. always about like how can we make things better for the community for our patrons so yeah yeah so yeah. that's fantastic so um yeah and then um so you were you were saying about your design charrette so so yeah yes. tell us a little more Yes, more about that. Uh, isn't that a strange word? It is a very strange word. Yeah, <laughs> but basically, what that means is an interactive public participation where we okay. we show them the property and say, "What do you want there?" Yeah, and we had we had pictures up of different ideas, and people were able to put stickers on the things that they really loved. Uh, we gave them maps, and they were able to say, "I want the gardens there, and I want this event space." I mean, the event space yeah. we didn't know um, that was kind of something that of co- it made sense as soon as yeah. people started talking about it we thought oh of course we need a dedicated event space (laughs) but we that isn't what we walked into the building thinking that people would want right um so public participation is really important and we um we had that workshop in october okay um we since then we did a in february we did a or yeah in february or beginning of march we did a question and answer um uh workshop so people could come in and they could ask us questions about this property. Okay. And um yeah, so and, so the people have spoken, right? Yes. So, oh, so absolutely. these are actually actual community members, business, you know, business owners that have come and said, "Hey, here's what we think. This is yes. how it could be this this could be the best use. This is what's important space. to us." Yeah. yeah. The, uh, people um the people of Lake Orion love the history of Lake Orion and they wanted to make sure that we were honoring that history and character. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've actually been in conversation with Historic Society to get okay. their advice on um, how we could honor our, our history. And one of the things they talked about were ice houses, which I didn't even what? know about. I No, I have not heard of them. <laughs> but here we are in Michigan, yeah. and we have this beautiful freshwater lake, and we can um, and it freezes over. And guess what? If you are uh, if you lived back before electricity, you had to have huge blocks of ice to put in your refrigerators to keep your food cold. Oh my God. <laughs> so there was this huge industry of ice houses in Lake Orion where they literally cut the ice out of the lake, take it to a building called an ice house, and yeah. then that would get loaded onto the trains and, and distributed. Wow. Who would have, I, I never would have known that had you not shared <laughs> that. That is so interesting. And that yeah. was done at that space. Yeah. 
yeah. and on the lake. Yeah, and on the yeah, lake, yeah, because the train came there, so right. it would get loaded on um, at that that corner. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was a corner at the time, right? <laughs> but, but the train went by there, right. and they'd slow down and throw chuck the ice on, and yeah. Wow. Oh, so so yeah. So so as part of the you know plans for developing the space, I love it that you got you have the historic society involved in a way that mm-hmm. it can be done. So that it honors the history of Lake Orion as well. Yes. So we're moving forward, but yet still yes. honoring, you know, all that was there before. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, people were, um, they recognized that maybe we needed a little bit more parking in the downtown area. Okay. So that's something that we can address there. Yeah. Um, they wanted to make sure that we were um, providing pedestrian friendly areas. Um, I, the... Right now, if you don't know, the um, Paint Creek Trail goes into downtown via the back of that property. Mm -hmm. We actually worked with Lake Orion Lumberyard in order to put that trail through um, from um, from Rochester all the way to downtown Lake Orion. Yeah. And they wanted to make sure that we were continuing to pay attention to those pedestrian areas and enhance them if we could. And then, and then obviously we had already talked about the safety on that corner, that, that intersection and the, the driveways that are associated close to that intersection. We need it to be safe Yes, for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a scary, scary intersection (laughs) if you're a pedestrian (laughs) or even driving sometimes. So yeah, Mm -hmm. that is, that's great that those are going to be addressed. And, um, so so what what needs to happen for this project to move forward? Because I know it's not, you know, signed and done, right? There are right. still a few more steps. So what needs to happen? For- yeah. Okay. So we're currently in the due diligence phase, which means we are figuring out all the background and we're doing all our financial stuff, all of those things. The next step is to get approval from the village council for a $5 million bond. Okay. And we have to have their approval. We cannot do this project without their go ahead without sure. their blessing. We need their blessing. So what we're looking for is for people to come to the April 10th and the April 24th village council meetings at 730 at Village Hall and okay. show their support of this project. Okay. So- and you can do that by during public comment saying, hi, I'm in favor of this project. Or you can write a letter and ask that it be read into public comment during the meeting. Okay. You can do both things. Um, you can write letters to the uh, editor at the Lake Orion Review. We're looking for a show of support that you guys want a dedicated event space, that you want to see that area cleaned up and safe for, for our future generations. We, we're really creating a legacy here, and that's what we want to to hear from you about. Yeah, that's great. So if you want to get involved, um, I mean, it could be as simple as sending a letter, sending an email, writing a letter to the editor. Or if you want to come in person as well, that would be fantastic because it's always nice when they can see friendly faces sitting in, you know, at the at the council meetings and showing your support. I do want to, so I, I guess I want to clarify too, right? Because the $5 million bond, you know, that the village council would support, it's not being paid by the village. Like it, Absolutely It's not. not coming out of their budget. Um, it's going to be 100% funded by the DDA and the DDA's budget. Yes, Yes. Um, we have looked at our, we've pledged, we've already pledged our um, tax incremented finance um, revenue, and that is um, tax revenue that we get every year. We have 2.3 times the amount that we need in order to pay that debt annually every year. Okay. We are, we are fully able to be responsible for that um, that debt, and, right. and we wouldn't be asking the village to take on something that we couldn't that you didn't know for. that you weren't yeah. that you weren't confident that you'd mm-hmm. be able to to make good on that commitment. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So the, the DDA has has the funds for that commitment. Yes. And then, you know, obviously you have a budget that's, you mm-hmm. know, that you work with and you use mm-hmm. the funds currently. Mm-hmm. So you have plans in place then what you can be doing then to to supplement for not for this project. This project is taken care of. Right. But then some of the other, you know, yeah, there's programs and, and yeah. yeah, there's programs and services that we do to support our businesses and for the community. Yeah. And we don't want to get rid of those. So instead, we are looking at alternative sources of funding to help us um, keep all of those services in place. Okay. And but but the paying off the debt is the priority. So that will yeah. always be the priority. There will never be a case where we don't pay off that debt. Instead, right. it would be if we had to 
we would reduce services. We don't want to do that. That's right. why we're looking at alternative funds. Right. Okay. That's great. And I, you know, I just think it's so great. I, I know that this is a big project and it's really in the scheme of things, it's short term. The amount of time that it's going to take this bond. Um, how long did you say? What? When will the bond be? Paid uh, we'll be complete? paying off this bond through 2039. Okay. I mean, so we'll just keep uh, going. Uh, you yeah. can do your own math, but it's about 15 years or so. So it's a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So about that. So, mm -hmm. but but you have to look at the DDA as it's long term, right? So there might oh, be right. some, yeah. there might be some short term, like, okay, let's, you know, we need to do some additional, maybe it's fundraising, which if that is your expertise and you are great at fundraising and you love the idea yeah. of this, then you might want to contact Molly because, you know, the DDA is always looking for fantastic volunteers to help. Oh, yes. If you love so your community areas. and this is your talent, please come yeah. and talk to us. We would love um, we'd love your help. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And if you just want to come and show your support, April 10th and April 24th at Village Hall, um, 7 or 7.30? 7.30, 7 the Village Council meetings. Yes. 7.30, the Village Council meetings. You can come. You can show your support. You can also write in a letter and email. Make sure you get those well in advance to a Village Council member so that they can read it in the meeting as well. So. You can send them to Susan Galeczka, the clerk, and ask okay. and Put in your, if you're emailing, say, please read into public comment. Okay. So make sure you are including that if you want it <laughs> read in, if you're not going to be attending the meeting in person. So, well, thank you, Molly. This was just a special edition episode. So we have four more episodes coming up um, about the DDA. So if you want to hear a little bit more about the DDA and its budget and where its funding comes from, we have an episode for that. A little more detail about what is the DDA, how did it get started, how did it come to be, um, and then what's coming for the future. So stay tuned. Be sure to tune into our future episodes. And in the short term, get involved and support this Lake Orion Lumberyard project, which is going to benefit all of us. So thank you, Molly, for joining us. Thank you all for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on Tea with Tracy. Thank you. Thank you.